and welcome everybody here in Twitch chat and everybody on YouTube who's watching this video later on for some more Sultai value. We played this deck yesterday and it was a ton of fun to play. So we're going to try it out again today. I'm um, playing out different decks to see what do I want to play in the MCQ tomorrow. So far, it uh, hasn't looked so good. Our first two decks did not perform very well. And I'm not super confident that this deck will perform real well either. But who knows? It did yesterday, and it was just a lot of fun to play. So let's let's just uh, try it out again. You know, we're going to try it out over in Ranked now. So we're giving it a really good test and seeing how it holds up, if it can hold up, and all that kind of stuff. Um, but yeah, let's let's go ahead and try our Sultai value deck. I guess if you haven't seen this deck before, um, we are playing a um, Muldratha the Gravetide deck. Sorry, updating some information here. So yeah, we're playing a Mold Muldratha the Gravetide deck this mythic from dominaria never really got to see too much play and so we actually built this deck for throwback thursday yesterday uh, built around different rares and mythics that didn't get to see very much play in standard but this deck just felt really good and it felt really fun to play like neo like neo forming all this stuff um yeah i don't know i don't really know like how to describe it we just have like all sorts of two for ones that's why this deck's called it soul tie value because like all these things all these creatures just generate value on their own and the deck can just kind of do a lot of cool things. So I'm in the market for doing cool things. Let's see if that continues to be the case, though. And let's give Sultai Value a try. <clears throat> All right, good looking, good looking hand to start with. <laughs> you hate cool. Hey, after wizard. This land of war elf won't die before my next turn. If it did, uh, my opponent was supposed to shock it. I was going to say that would be shocking. And then as they cast the shock, but they didn't. Hmm. So Chain Whirler would be a bummer. I was definitely hoping for a land there. Hey, Bordrin. Um, how's our matchup versus Scapeshift with this deck? Probably not good. We got our Unmoored Egos in our sideboard that we're relying on. But it's not a deck that I actively want to play against. No Chain Whirler, that's a good sign. So I can pay two life to Hostage Taker, this Lava Runner. But then I'm down to nine. 
I could instead neoform the Risen Reef and get Chupacabra and kill the Lava Runner. So, you know, basically, I don't want to turn... I, I want that to be hard for them to cast these things. Like, I need to get rid of the Lava Runner. The problem with the, the neoform line... That's eh, not a big problem. All right, so we'll go to attacks. I say the the problem with the neoform line is that then we don't have neoform to get um, a better card like the Cavalier of Night or Yurok, um, some Life Linkers. But it's not that big of a deal. And now more green in there. And now we could even have like Muldratha next turn, but we we have Tamio that gets to buy Neo that gets to rebuy Neo for him. That's why I was saying it's not that big a deal. Yeah, Yurok has lifelink. The Caval the Black Cavalier has lifelink as well. Oh, don't have two three, da three mana burn spells. No, 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 no. Oh, come on. Ugh. So their last card in hand was a three, three damage burn spell, and then they drew one for turn? No. Teach me for shocking there. All right, so dead weight, duress, legion's end. One Liliana, one Muldratha, Tamio. <laughs> I think Spark Double. Yeah, Spark Double. I guess Chandra is going to be a real problem for me. Yeah, I guess I guess four mana Chandra could be a real problem. The Vivian can take out Frenzy. Yeah, so I could play Playcrafter. That's the card I was kind of looking at, Playcrafter. But if they have, like, their one-mana creatures and stuff, Playcrafter looks pretty bad. Hmm. I just hate Assassin's Trophy. Really don't like giving my opponents mana in Standard. Really don't like it at all. Hey, Paul. Yeah, like, late... Late game, whenever you're both like in top deck mode and stuff like that, like trophy is really good. But 
It's nothing you want to play on turn two, turn three, anything like that. Alright, come on, hit a land here. Hit a land, hit a land. Yay! Just so, like, we have, like, Cavalier of Night can be played next turn. We would have to shock for Cavalier of Night. But I could also just go Risen Reef Neoform. And then, what would I Neoform? I would get... Just Choop? Ooh. Hmm. All right, so Firebrand. All right, so we're gonna save this dead weight for Firebrand. Let's get your rock in play. Not shock, so because I want to dead weight the Firebrand so they don't get to just block, and then sacrifice. Which I guess doing that means we don't have triple black anymore. So we'll just tomb bound Lich. Homebound Lich. It's not as enjoyable to say. It's not. It's not as enjoyable to say. Tome bound. Tomb bound. Alright, got a couple of life linkers here. How got a lot of life you as well. Stop nature. Get our double risen reef trigger. Ooh. That could be good.
No, I'm just not going to attack. Hey, what's up, Xanakin? I really appreciate that Twitch Prime sub there. Seventeen subscribers on the day. So my plan there was to uh, like you know sack the Cavalier Knight, go get Moldratha. Cavalier Knight puts Risen Reef back into play. Get you know like four Risen Reef triggers. Then Moldratha enters, and you get two more Risen Reef triggers. So we're gonna have six Risen Reef triggers there, and then I could then I was just gonna recast the Cavalier of Night, sack a Risen Reef, get two more Risen Reef trigger, or get four more Risen Reef triggers. Oh gosh. Actually the first one would have been so it would have been four, four, four. We were gonna have twelve risen reef triggers there. Ugh. And then we're gonna kill their three three first strike and then attack. Alright, anyway. We saw them have a bunch of those little crappy one ones. It does kind of make me want to play Plague Mare. More than I would normally want to play Plague Mare. No, I don't, Xanakin. Let's just go down to one Moldratha. Yeah, they could be playing Cavalcade of Calamity, or maybe they're just playing that for extra one drops. I don't know. Hey, what's up, Noob Loco? Welcome to the channel. Santa619. Taking care of there. Everybody get some hype boats in the chat. Y'all know the drill whenever we get subscribers like that. Thanks. Thanks there. Ugh. Chandra Acolyte of Flame. That card's annoying. I'm probably dead. There's a really good chance that I'm dead. Oh yeah, maybe. Oh yeah, I forgot about Plague Mare. <laughs> I forgot about Plague Mare. Yeah, turning Paradise Druid into Plague Mare. That was my best course of action there. That's an aggressive lightning strike. Please draw a land. Please draw a land. Or they just draw lethal. Oh, Hawkeye. Get my losses out of the way today. Yeah, I should have neoformed for Plague Mare. Thanks, like a boss. Yeah, I wouldn't have to shock. Would have stayed at 10. Or 12. Would have stayed at 12. Kill two creatures. Have a 3-3 three, three to block. They lightning strike my 3-3. Three, three. 
But yeah, I mean, that was definitely the play. All right, Hawkeye. We're gonna start playing better today. What do you think? Temple Guard and Lanwar Elf. Vant Elementals, looks like. My army will envelop this world. <laughs> Good help is easy to find in war. All right, turn three, Liliana. We'll see if that can beat Risen Reef. May not. But, you know, like next turn we'll have like the Cavalier can kill Risen Reef, or if they have like a Krasis or something like that. We're going to be trying to ultimate this Liliana, seeing if they have an answer. Alright, so we will, at this rate, we're going to be ultimating first. Right on schedule. Not anymore. Man, we have turn three Liliana and we're getting drowned. Like, oh, I've done I guess I need to minus two the Liliana, I guess. Or not minus four. The problem with minus four is that, you know, we are How close to having the Liliana die if we do that. Wow. Are you kidding me? Close your eyes. Breathe. And wow. Listen to the sounds of the wild. All right, well this is over. Not disappointed with my aim and their claws, you're done. Wow. I'm gonna go to the next game. All right, well, we're gonna get Plague Mare, Masker Girl, Command the Dread Horde all in here. I'm 
Journey's going to come out against the little Teferi deck. No, Hawkeye doesn't go outdoors. No, he just stays here. He stays inside. exactly what I want to take out. Taking out 5 mana Vivian, even though 5 mana Vivian can... Can help us win a board stall. No, I think I like Spark Double in this kind of matchup. There's not going to be a lot of, like, just an abundance of removal. Spark Double can do some really cool stuff for us here. All right, just got to hit lands. Come on, hit land. Very good. See that happen too often. So I wanted to to put that into my hand and then play it to not make it see like if I so that's like kind of an important turn there. If I play Hinterland Trust Harbor I have a plan. off of the top with Risen Reef, I will then it certainly seems like I am uh, missing land drops. Because the like then then I don't play a land for turn and then my opponent can be like oh they're missing land drops and and they can kind of act accordingly, knowing they don't have lands in my hand. However, if I if I say that that's a card that goes to my hand and then I play a land for turn, it just seems like I'm playing a land for turn. However, we have not really found more lands, unfortunately. So I'm looking for Masker Girl and lands. Those are the two things I really want to see. I do not want them to kill my Yurok either. Because I want to play Risen Reef and get four triggers next turn. Let's try this. <laughs> All right, Eric. Take care. I know my responsibility. I love everything from deer to dinosaurs. Leafkin druids on our opponent's side have looked really impressive. Paradise druids on my side have looked nowhere near as impressive. Watch out, they bite. Nature's true power.
Just can't play my spells. Here we go. All right, well, that got us a couple lands to start. Still don't have the mana to be able to go like Risen Reef plus a five drop next turn, unfortunately. And we still kind of need to just draw draw our masker girl rise my elemental friend So we should be taking lethal here. Like they, they have lethal with just the Vivian activation with that removal spell. Oh, well, they have lethal still. Okay. Well, things aren't really working out today. We're getting all the losses out of the way today, though. So we don't need them tomorrow. Yeah, that's that's how today has been. Our opponents have had really, really good draws all the time. Like it's just, it's been pretty crazy. That's how today has been. All right, Esper, yay! I think Esper is the only deck we we beat. I think. Pretty sure we beat Esper for our one win today. Trust me, you'll thank me later. No, I am not making this up as I go. Don't make another move. So that's a time where Paradise Druid was a little, little bit better than Leafkin. They could have bounced Leafkin, but they couldn't bounce the Paradise Druid there. So I could go Risen Reef, Neoform the Druid into another Risen Reef here. Or I can have Vivian, or I can just play the Vivian and start working up on Vivian. I think I want double Risen Reef. That sounds appealing. Or we just cast these.
So I do have five blue-black lands, so if the Paradise Druid dies, I don't actually get to play the Vivian. Well, that's a lot of Risen Reef triggers. So they have five cards left in hand. We have five cards left in hand. So pretty fair fight here. Uh, this Park Double has three CMC when it's a Risen Reef. Alright, I'll do. So we'll have Command the Dread Horde. I do like Play Crafter here. And a couple Duress. We could play Veil of Summer as well, if we would like. I want to... Uh... Right, Spark, Spark Double is 4 CMC, but whenever whenever you copy it, it, it turns into a copy of that, that thing. So, like, we, we played it as a Risen Reef, so it turns into 3 CMC, because it, it turns into the Risen Reef. It becomes a copy of Risen Reef. Ah, uh, dead weight. All right, Vanifar coming on out here. Also, what's the last card? Maybe it's one of the Moldrathas since I'm bringing it in command. Just so we don't have five, six drops. Yeah, Playcrafter is my anti-Teferi card here in this matchup. Alright, don't let them Thought Erasure my Risen Reef away. Oh, they were relying on Thought Erasure, too. I don't have black mana, though, but... Oh, there's black mana. No... Yeah, so they took Tamiyo because if they don't take Tamiyo, like if they take the Risen Reef, then I just Tamiyo back Risen Reef.
that makes sense. All right, horsey. I am not going to say this. <laughs> My thought erasure te technique. This card has the most text, so you're gone. That's pretty good. Choose the card with the most most text. That's a pretty good technique right there. So Cavalier Knight's not bad here, of course, because if they kill Cavalier Knight, then we get Risen Reef back. Those who cannot I have just the trick for this. Rude. was not prepared for this. All right, let's get Risen Reef back. Risen Reef trigger. Go put Moldratha into play. Risen Reef trigger. Hopefully a land. Yay. Play the land. Play our Planeswalker. Planeswalker, we will tick up study. and say. Seek and find. <laughs> oh, that is awesome. <laughs> what a turn. This deck is sweet. What's up, Laredus One? Alright, whenever we get to do our thing, our thing is pretty cool there. Gotta, gotta admit, that was pretty cool. Yep, we got a win. We got a win. All right, I think I want to change one small thing for Mankind. I think I want another Leafkin Druid in here, and I'm going to take out the Journey to Eternity. That, the Journey is pretty janky. It's It was in there for the Throwback Thursday thing, but let's get another Mana Creature in instead of the Journey. Sorry, Journey to Eternity. Just one another mana creature. So we've seen like being able to play our spells quite important. And Leafkin, of course, uh, triggers Risen Reef. Having another two drop is good for Neoform to be able to sacrifice two drops also to grab Risen Reef as well. Something happened with my. If you just. Something happened with chat, so I just missed. Um, like my Twitch chat went away there for a little while. So if you said something recently, I missed it. Like since I took out Journey. Are we playing. Playing the same deck we just played just a little bit ago. Ooh. Well, I could Leafkin Lanor Elf, or I could just hostage take this thing. Let's let's Leafkin Lanor Elf. Stand by and watch. This 
Might be a bad idea. Let us march into battle and make new comrades. Uh, get out of my way! <clears throat> Alright, so we learned our lesson. Minus the Liliana. I don't know any official word of when the new set spoilers are out, but my best guess would be uh, beginning of September. Do I want Legion's End? That's mana creatures and crisis. Like that's that's all Legion's End hits is mana creatures and crisis. This thing I kind of like all of my cards here. I guess I guess Tombbound Lich. I guess that's our card that we're taking out. Yeah, I guess we're just taking out Tombbound Lich. Actually. So like Deadweight actually kills Risen Reef. Or Legion's End doesn't. We'll go one and one. Could just go two two Deadweights to kill Risen Reefs. No, Neoform's awesome here. Oh, we'll we'll go one and one. One end, one dead weight. Yeah, I'll be playing Brawl. I'll be playing Brawl and Historic as well. I don't know how much. I'll probably have like one day be the Brawl day, one day be a Historic day kind of thing. You maybe set up like a, a, a schedule kind of thing like that. a good card. I want my Masker Girl to kill my Vanifar. We can wait on Masker Girl. We can go like Cavalier of Night next turn, sack Risen Reef to kill something, then sack the Cavalier of Night, go, go get the second Muldratha, put the Risen Reef back into play. You know, get a bunch of Risen Reef triggers basically and kill something. Or I guess I should have played around Time Wipe. Not a card I was expecting there. We can recast stuff eventually with Muldratha. It'll take a little bit of time though. That's a good one.
Hmm. It's an interesting game that we've been playing here. Not super confident in us winning this. With all the one drops gone, or like the one toughness thing's gone, sorry, one toughness thing's gone, it's makes Masker Girl worse for sure. Like if they have like exile removal for the Cavalier Knight, we'll be in a little bit of trouble. Okay, so they're doing that. So come on, draw land. Land, please. Okay, so we'll have... One, two, three, four, five. So I could play Masker Girl. It doesn't kill the Hydra, though. So actually, that was kind of my plan, is like... That was actually kind of my plan, was Land of Elf, Masker Girl, but now I realize that the Hydra being a 5-6, it won't kill the Hydra. So that plan's not great. I could just play Muldratha. I can go. Hmm. Yeah, I can Neoform Root Reef, get Chupacabra, which will be a 3 3, kill the Hydra, and then I have a 3 3 Chup. I think that's my best. Yeah, that's that's the best thing to do. And then we can just play Paradise Druid and Llanowar Elf so we have more mana. Because if I just play Muldrotha, if they kill it, I'm in a lot of trouble. Neoform's just awesome. All right, so Masker Girl will still kill everything, even if I block one. If I block the other one, two, then Masker Girl, I get one trigger, then two triggers, then three triggers, then four triggers, and then these are all dead. So yeah, actually, we can just double block here. So they still have a lot of cards. I mean, I could... No, I can't wipe their board. Never mind, because that lane world is a 2-2. Never mind. So I have nine cards in my graveyard, but they're all creatures besides the sorcery that I can't cast. So all the permanents are creatures. So I can only play one a turn. this whole time wipe plan for my opponent not like I don't like it it's not good I don't like it because it's killing me oh well then all right so Tulsimer is five 
Uh, six, seven, eight for Risen Reef. Twelve for Vanifar. That'll put me down to two, but then I'll gain three. Oh, yeah, Tristani. Yeah, I guess Tristani's a problem. It's like kind of a pro Yeah, I guess it's kind of a problem. Brr. I'm just going to play Moldratha. Alright, so I'm at 12. So we're going to do uh, 5... Six, seven, eight, nine. Probably just nine. Play it safe. Safe ish. Just these two. Kill Tristani. Kill the deputy. Give me that. What? I don't want to pay two life. What was that mess? Pay two life. Pay to life. Next. Yeah, put counters on my Tulsimer in my other token. So yeah, I can spark double the Tulsimer and get a new wolf. We'll have to sacrifice one of the, you know, we'd have to sacrifice like the, the wolf that's in play right now. We're fit enough to survive. Let's go. Let's get the Cavalier now. Actually, I'll sack the wolf. Kill this. Ooh. And then Spark Double Tulsimer, gain three life, kill Leaf Kindred. Attack Vivian with some stuff. Or do I want to spark double Cavalier of Night? Or just want to play Risen Reef and Deadweight? I guess we'll just do that.
They're like taking lethal next turn either way. This is not lethal against them. The only way to save the Vivian is to double chump. This place is like a zoo. And they don't don't get to like minus and go grab, I don't know, like a Awakening Sun's avatar. I don't know what's in their sideboard. I think they have Awakening Sun's avatar. All right, we're two and two. We're coming back. This deck's feeling pretty good. It's feeling pretty good. Willem, welcome to the channel. Thanks so much for the support. Get some hype boats in the chat for our new subscriber here. Thanks, Willem. So I'm number 19 on the day. So we are one away from... Oh, it's 18? Oh, I guess I was I was one ahead anyway, I guess. Actually, so it's actually 18 now. So number 18 on the day. So we're two away from our next up goal. Maybe one of these leaf cans is supposed to be that journey to eternity. What's up, William? Uh, thank you so much. Glad you're watching the YouTube videos every day. And thanks for stopping by here to subscribe as well. Welcome. What? Assassin's Trophy? The Leafkin Druid? People are cray. That assassin's trophy is just burning a hole through their hand. Just gotta cast it. I am Tamio. All right. Well, I can't be Tamio. <laughs> Not with this hand that I have here. Yeah, we have Deadweight in this deck because we have Muldrotha. Muldrotha can continue, can cast Deadweight over and over, which I have done before to kill like a Danto Vanguards over and over. So yeah, that's why we have Deadweight instead of Disfigure. Stop interrupting me. Well, this is sad. I don't, honestly don't know how we win this. I don't know what I'm supposed to be naming with Tamio. Is there anything that comes up? Can Vanifar? 
Get us there. Dreadhorde general. Dueling you will be excellent research. I mean, I guess I'm probably just supposed to say Risen Reef also because we have four of those. And then we minus and pick up other cards. I think our opponent's going to overrun us here, though. Yeah, that the early Tamiyo, I have no, no answer to that Tamiyo, and it's gotten too much value. It does kind of seem like maybe I should have the mana base built towards having access to Field of the Dead also. The storied past holds our future. Seems like that's pretty free. So we can get back Moldratha. Well, they should have played Yurok first before playing the land. But they're still good. Yeah, I mean, we're, we're basically doing the same thing, except for they just have Field of the Deads and I don't. There's not really a reason why I don't have Field of the Deads in the deck. I could, I suppose. No tail should be discarded. Cast as land. Six, seven, eight. Eight mana. Can we have nine mana? I want to take your rock and then play your rock. Guess I'll just settle for Risen Reef.
Like, eventually, like, they're just going to be casting Nexuses. We don't, we don't win this. Well, whatever they discard, I just get to play it with Muldratha, so it's not that big a deal. I guess unless they kill Muldratha, then that would be a big deal. I don't have a sweeper in my main like I don't have Masker Girl, Plague Mare, anything like that in my main deck either. I have learned much from my ancestors. I don't have any more basics. No, nah, I don't have like Legion's End or anything like that. Yeah, Feather's a good deck. Yeah, Feather's pretty good, Black Heart. I don't know why they're not killing their own Risen Reef. Like, isn't it more valuable for them to have a card in their graveyard than me have a card in my graveyard? I would think so. Right, so ultimate Liliana. That's our that's our goal. Will that happen? Unlikely. But that's our that's our way to win. Seek and find. At least we found a way to win. So that's good. If they didn't have the Tamiyo, I'd be feeling a whole lot better. But they do have a Tamiyo, so I don't feel as good. How are they not attacking? I have no idea how they're not attacking. They are not giving me much time here. All right, we're going to have to play quickly.
23 cards. I guess I'm going to be milling out, aren't I? I'm looking for removal for your rock. There we go. That'll work. I don't have a Mask of Girl in the main deck. So I could have gone and grabbed Cavalier Knight, but I didn't really want more Risen Reef triggers. A fun new toy. No, I don't have any board wipes in the main deck. My looks like my opponent's finally gonna kill me. Wasn't too long a game though. I was expecting these timers to be farther down than what they were. Delfler, welcome to the channel. Thank you so much there, 619, for the gifted sub. Sub number 19 on the day. All right, Risen Reef draws a Risen Reef, which draws two more cards. They are getting really close to only having Nexus left. All right, they finally attacked. Yep, exactly lethal. 18 damage coming through. may not really be good. Can we Ego Field of the Dead? Question number one. Question number two, is that worth it? Yeah, Tamiel's a real problem. That card was a problem. Y'all think e Ego Field is worth it? Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, they, they're they probably going to struggle to kill me without Field. So 
So what four cards am I taking out? Plague Mare. Oh yeah, we don't need Plague Mare. Alright, that's out. Um, I kind of liked that recast Deadweight over and over. We got to kill a few zombies for one mana each with Deadweight, which is pretty nice. Uh, we're just going two of these, and I'm going... No, are you kidding me? Uh, hey, when it... some See, sometimes you have like 11 seconds like that, and it just says you're not sideboarding anymore. You're done. Other times it, it gives you the full, the full time. Jeez. Hey, Green, doing okay? Which five drop am I putting back? I think Vivian has more potential than the Cavalier. And when we're just sitting at five cards, um, I'm going for the more high-risk, high-reward play. Yeah, that's why Mulligan the hand. I thought it was too slow. At least we, we have Vivian in the grave. I mean, it, it didn't matter. We have Vivian in the graveyard instead of Cavalier, which I'd rather have Vivian in the graveyard than Cavalier if we find Muldratha and are able to play it. Obviously, with my my opponent just having a hand of Assassin's Trophy and Thought Erasures and stuff, then yeah, that, that first hand was not going to be too slow and could have just kept it. I'm glad they let that trigger happen and didn't kill it in response to the trigger. Yeah, they... Because if you kill in response to the trigger, you put something back, then... Um... Hmm. Then it gets milled over. So the problem with taking Muldratha is I can't, like... I play Muldratha, and then I just play Llanowar Elf. If they kill Muldratha, then I'm kind of done. So instead, I think grabbing Tamio, Where I can go Tamio, Tamio, grab Risen Reef, play Risen Reef. So I can have, like, those two cards next turn. I mean, I guess I could grab Cavalier of Thorns here. Instead. No. I follow the tracks of the wise.
I have learned all I can here. Well, holding the land means Tombbound Lich. Like, if they do have Thought Erasure, maybe they'll cast it, but then Tombbound Lich. Um, could get us a new card. Yeah, I didn't. I didn't go Moldrotha or Cavalier because I wanted to play the turn. I wanted to play the card that turn, and you know, draw into something else to be able to play the next turn instead of just setting up my draw step for the next turn. But obviously, uh, the Risen Reef bricked and our draw step bricked. Let's play one more. Certainly hurt not being able to sideboard and then mulli mulliganing to five. I got a sideboard faster. Usually take a breather, you know, like whenever the game ends and, you know, talk to, like, you know, just answer questions in chat and stuff and, and then start sideboarding and... That took too long. Not a not exactly sure, Starman. I uh, haven't haven't really played it enough to say if the Bio Essence Hydra deck is is real strong in it, and it also kind of depends at you know, like what, you know, some people's thresholds for what's strong enough for competitive play versus others is different. So, I don't know. I don't have, like, an exact answer for you. It's not one that I would just write off, though. All right, so Field of the Dead Part 2. Again, not having Sweeper as a main deck, I'm, I'm kind of just throwing away Scape Shift matchup, game one. Yeah, I think Vamps would be, I think Vampires would be the hardest matchup for that Bio Essence deck. That would be my, that would be the deck that I would be scared of, would be Vampires. You can just play a whole lot of Blood Suns in red and, you know, like red decks, you can just play four Blood Suns, four Escape Shift decks. Yeah, see, uh, I, I am planning on playing Mono Black tomorrow. Hmm. 
I'll just play the 6 6. So, really considering just going Risen Reef plus. Like, if we had another blue source, but we just don't have. We just don't guarantee to have a blue source, even though we get to look at four cards with the Risen Reef there. But this thing in Risen Reef, and then uh, Neo form the Risen Reef into a Spark Double, and Spark Double the Uroc. Sorry, I'm late. That's more like it. So they get the next turn as well. Which kills me. All right, well, we're relying on, on more to go here. Because, like, if we bring in Masker Girl, it's just not, I don't know, like, we kill, sure, we can kill, like, the tokens once, but they're just going to refuel. I mean, it's probably better than something else, though. Play it over the second Cavalier of Thorns, that one's not too valuable. Yeah, Legion's End is is definitely a lot better in this matchup than Masker Girl is. I don't think we can keep a hand without Unmored Ego. All right, well we'll keep this one. Got to draw blue mana, hopefully. No, there's no main deck Legion's Ends in this deck. Wah, wah. No blue mana. Yay, blue mana. All right, Field of the Dead. So we'll see what they have to win without Field of the Dead. Crisis. All right, let's see what we got. So just, so they have all four Teferis, and then like one Deputy and four Krasis, and just one Nexus. Uh, 
All right, so their hand is still pretty tough, though, honestly. Their hand's a lot better than mine. Double Krasis, this Rejuvenator to ramp them. They have the Time Wipe also when they're behind, bounce, rebounds a Krasis. And this Circuitous Route ramps them really well, too. Like, we are... We're going to be losing this game. Like, as far as the cards in their deck go, this is, like, the best hand they can have that's not Field of the Dead. Because ramp here, then double ramp, and then big crisis, big crisis, reset, draw, get back crisis. Really, I need to find another ego to name crisis. Like, if we... If we luckily find another ego for crisis, I mean, it'd be very lucky, but then I like our chances a lot. If we don't... It's going to be hard to beat these Krasises. Vivian's a good first step. Vivian kills one flyer. Uh, drawing a Legion's End also. That'd be a really good draw. Like where that can exile the Krasis and the other ones in their hand and stuff. And Vivian doesn't die to Time Wipe either. This was just a, a very solid draw step for us. It's not our best draw. Best draw is Ego. But it's not a bad one. The wilds are my shield. Hmm. <laughs> I didn't put it in Legion's End in this matchup. Like, I just didn't put it in. That's weird. I must have just missed it whenever I was doing all the sideboarding. Because that it should certainly be in my deck. <laughs> you have to do better than that. Sometimes rest. Oh, not dead yet. Well, that's not good if I don't have. Yeah, it's definitely not good if I don't actually have Legion's End in the deck. We do have one Krasis down. Do I have Choop or Hostage Taker still in? I think I may have Hostage Taker still in. Because Hostage Taker in Krasis is really good. Yeah. All 
Alright, I'm thinking they're time wiping this. So I think I may just cast this Krasis for for three. With just them just time wiping anyway. They could just play little to fairy though and bounce their crisis now. So I guess that's the that's the downside of playing it, I suppose, that I didn't really think of. This isn't a fight you can win. All right, well I've got it. So I'm waiting to play Moldratha where I can like play Moldratha and play Vivian same turn kind of thing. Obviously, we need to hit a lot more land drops. But, or, I was basically just waiting until after that time wipe for Moldratha. So, yeah, I should have. I probably just should not have cast that Krasis. Just let it die. Yeah, I should not with Teferi there. No one knows the wilds like I do. Cut Purse just doesn't do anything. I don't really need to show Cut Purse. Did we see another time wipe from them? I don't remember. Yeah, I don't think I don't think so either. Oh, I've done the hero thing before. So Krasis is like their only win con left. We basically just need to find another ego, get rid of the Krasis. I, and then I I don't think they had anything else besides like rejuvenators. You show remorse, I'll show restraint. Nothing. Yeah, Moldratha's good. Definitely good with like Vanifar, Neoform, stuff like that, like where you can play Moldratha out. She's gotten a lot better, like she's a lot better with like these elementals that ramp you into so much mana allows you to like play Moldratha plus other stuff. A lot easier. Ah, most wounds can heal. Meet my newest friend. All right, I will not play their Krasis this time and let them get it back. It's only a matter of time. So I think they just have like, so like they have the four Teferis, four Krasis. So two, two Teferis gone, two Krasis gone.
They have the one Nexus in there. That we also have to be a little worried about. But I don't remember anything else that they had. I don't think they, don't think they really had any other creatures besides Rejuvenators. Yeah, like we have we have Vivian to kill one Krasis, we have Spark Double, our hostage taker, for another. Oh, they had a deputy, that's right. They had I thought they had one other thing. That's right, they have a deputy at detention. That's right. Deputy. That's right, there's a deputy. No, they don't they don't get deputy. So, like, Krasis will come in as a 0, zero if they bounce Hostage Taker or Deputy Hostage Taker. Krasis just comes in as a zero, 0. I would like to test a new hypothesis with you. The past is never forgotten. Wow, I did not bring in Legion Sense. All right, well, let's do that. All right, so this is our last match here with the Soul Tie Value, uh, last game here. After this game, I have one more bounty to do tonight. So, I would really appreciate if y'all don't leave after uh, after this game, and then we'll do the y'all you know, do the the recap, and then do the bounty for the Overwatch League MVP. It's the last bounty of the night, I promise. But it's bounties are like little advertisements. We go through the Overwatch League MVP thing where it gets revenue based on how many people in here. So um, even if you want to switch out to another stream or anything else during this match, I'd appreciate if you just even just let, you know mute, go to like a you know keep the tab open basically. If you're on your PC, keep the tab open for a little bit. I would really appreciate that. So Blast Zone on 2 could be a really big problem here. Like, if I go Leaf Kin Druid... Which I'm going to do it, but if I go Leaf Kin Druid here, they go Blast Zone on 2. This could be a problem. I could have Neoformed into Risen Reef to help protect against that. But I just hopefully... I just want to draw a land and play the Muldratha. But well, this could definitely be a problem. The thing is, it does blow up one of their lands. Which them on turn 4 already destroying a land is good for me. I 
I'm pretty nervous here, though. Alright, I... Guessing our opponent has um, Veil of Summer. That seems like a pretty solid guess. Ooh. Yeah, yeah, Veil. Every story is an opportunity for new data. Yeah, I'm, st I'm still I saying on Mord Ego, though, somewhere. right? Duress. Any lands? Alright, I'm going crafty here. It would have been nice to hit the land drop. Off of that, but we didn't. So we're we're going crafty. Seeing if they escape shift here. I hope they cast escape shift. Seriously? Excellent timing. That's more like it. Why did that have to fairy? find my notes helpful so now I can't play a cup purse at instant speed Well, I really think my opponent has Veil of Summer, so I don't think the Ego does anything. And obviously it doesn't do anything right now because it can instant speed scape shift. So Ego really doesn't do anything right now. But the turn before. I would lose the game if I played on more Ego because they would... Veil of Summer. And then end step scape shift. So I'm doing the Crafty Cup purse. Yeah, Teferi, three mana Teferi just messes everything up. So I'm doing this. They respond with Scape Shift, and then Legions and the tokens.
Yeah, I guess I guess I could be wrong. I guess they, maybe they don't have Veil of Summer. I could be wrong about that. This deck would be so easy to beat if it wasn't for this Teferi. This Teferi is the, such a messed up card. It makes it like that's the card that just makes this deck. This deck would be too slow without the Teferi. So they did have Veil of Summer. They didn't float green though. Hmm. But yeah, I guess they did have the Veil of Summer. Well, after I play Cup Purse like that, they had to do it. They had to play the Scape Shift right then. <clears throat> they could have also just waited a turn. They could have just been like, okay, and then just wait a turn. Could have definitely done that too. Yeah, that's kind of what Veil does. Shut down's op shuts down options. We're gonna need more lands. Let's see if we hit a land here. Get the veil out of their hand. I guess I'll have Tamio grab Legion's End, I guess. It's either Legion's End or Unmoored Ego. Because we can cast everything else. Discarded. Obviously, I can't Legion's End right now because of the Veil of Summer. Man, little Teferi messed us up. Ego would just take the rest of the Krasis's out of their deck, I guess. They just can't cast anymore. I don't think I can really beat the Field of the Dead, though. I mean, well, how many lands have they gone through? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9... 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18. Yeah, they still have too many lands for me to deal with.
Ooh, we need to hit more lands. I felt like I was taking a lot more time than our opponent. I guess not. I'm at 16, they're at 12. Here we go. I have become too involved with my work. Okay, so two. Three, four, five. We'll sack this cuppers. And we'll kill the four, four. Dang, I already played a land. I really should have seen that coming. So all they have are Teferis, basically. So let's assume they have 28 lands. So they have three, six, seven, eight, nine. All right, they're getting this one. How many is this? Four, five, six. Ah, all right, that's all four Field of the Dead, sting. Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13. 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22. I think that's 22, so I think we'd have to deal with six more lands, so 24 more zombies. Blech. Yeah, I know they can bounce Legion's End with Krasis. I don't I don't mind that. I'm I'm much more worried about all the zombies. That's fine. We'll find something for Krasis. NBD. I wanted to kill. The, I wanted to take that Teferi out of there, like out. Of, you know, I wanted to at least kill that. Like, getting rid of the zombies meant I got to kill Teferi. But now that we see that they have four Teferis, you know, we didn't. We didn't know they had four Teferis. I've got time. We are going to have to... Because, yeah, like, them them bouncing... just Them just continually bouncing blockers. If they want to do that, that's annoying. Responsibility. Like, I'll trying to get... You. Trying to kill these things. I need so much more mana than what I have. Lot more mana. Come on, I need lands. Land, yeah. One, 
Yeah, so I guess I'm just going to do another Risen Reef here. Then I'm, I'm going to duress that last Teferi out of their hand. If I play to land this turn, I don't think I have. So we'll just decline that one. So basically, I think my plan right now is like Moldratha for next turn. Yeah, I did not play to land good. Get this land world in there too. So okay, Moldratha can return Tamio. Tamio can return Legion's End. We can kind of do a little chain like that. They make a bunch more zombies. And then, yeah, yeah, we, we, we can kill Krasis. We, we can figure out ways to kill Krasis. How many lands do they have left, did we say, if they have 28? I already forgot. Three, six. Ugh, and they, their lands keep on tapping, so it's hard to, t hard to count because they keep moving. Seven, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. All right, so that's 15 there. I could just know how many they have in the graveyard. Trust they have nine in the graveyard. So 15 in play, nine in the graveyard. All right, Arena, stop lagging. Let me play. Okay, let me play. That will probably be okay, tap-wise. How do I kill them before I mill out, though, also? I guess that's... I guess I have to be worried about that. So, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So we got another Veil of Summer. I guess I have lands in my graveyard I could grab. Yeah, I guess I didn't have to shock. Oh well. Let us have a storied battle worth retelling. I have learned much from my ancestors. They're just not even casting their Veil of Summers, huh? Huh. They can have four zombies here. Oh, wait. Oh, yeah, they get to play the instant speed scape shift. Right. I was thinking just the... Field of the Dead. So never mind, they get 16 zombies. Because they have four lands left, so they get 16 zombies. So I guess I'm dead. 
<sighs> Teferi's still broken. And I guess we couldn't really do anything about it because they had the Veil of Summer. For no matter what I did. Yeah, but 16 zombies still kills me. Because they probably only have three more lands. They're sacking seven lands. Are they not going to have... If they only have three more lands... Oh, man. How great would that be if they don't actually trigger Field of the Dead? Uh, they had four more lands. So they had 29 lands. Oh, man. That would have been so great if they didn't actually trigger Field of the Dead. I'm telling you, it's this, this is the card, you know, like, this whole play instant speed at, at your end step. You know, I have Legion's end there, and I still die. Wait, like, how, how do you beat the Fairy Time Raveler? How do you beat that? Can't. Unbeatable. It's Unmoored Ego, the Field of the Deads, or lose. That was the fourth Teferi also. We got rid of three Teferis. Couldn't get rid of the fourth one, though. Such a busted combination. Such a busted combination. All right, so our deck was okay. Um, I do think that the combo matchups are going to be our hardest matchups. So, like, Field of the Dead. You know, we got a couple of losses there to Field of the Dead. Um, that That is just going to be the hardest thing for me to beat. And I, I know that. I recognize that. Um... You know, I could I could go four on more egos. I could I could definitely add an I could definitely get another on more ego. The crafty cup purse, you know, that's that's a cute card that I wanted to try out to see. But you know, it doesn't beat the Teferi part. So honestly, it's probably just four on more ego, no crafty cup purse. That's probably just the thing there um, to do. I uh, I don't. I don't know what you're t saying there, Ripper. In you can't instant speed... You can't instant speed Cup Purse when Teferi's in play. I didn't have enough to attack to kill Teferi at 6 loyalty that last turn. E especially with everything else that I had to do. I didn't have enough. Like I just couldn't, couldn't have done that. Yeah, like we, we didn't have enough power on the battlefield to kill Teferi. Like, they had four four other blockers. I had to do a lot to, like, clear out those other blockers. We, we couldn't. Like, that just wasn't a possibility of things that we could do. Um, but there we go. Soul Tie Value, still a lot of fun to play. Uh, understand that Field of the Dead is going to be a problem. But we got hope maybe going up to four or more Egos in the sideboard. Maybe that helps out. What do you think, Hawkeye? Maybe that, maybe that helps out. Another card I could play in the sideboard. Ugh. And honestly, this would probably just be a pretty good card to have. I probably just want one Spyglass in the sideboard. Maybe play that instead of that Playcrafter. I know Playcrafter is like my anti-Esper thing. But honestly, like as you saw like that other game, like we're great against Esper anyway. So a what a Spyglass does is we can name Teferi with Spyglass. And then, then they don't get to do the tick up where they don't get to do the instant speed scape shifts. And so even though we can't play instance, that doesn't matter as long as they can't play instance either like that. So I think, I think I'm going to go with one spyglass um, to just name so they don't get to trigger Teferi. And then like if they kill spyglass, we can get it back with Moldratha also. It's another, it's a permanent that you can get back. That's, that's pretty cool. I think, I think we're going to go with one spyglass there also. But I don't know. Maybe I'll play this deck tomorrow. We'll see. Uh, no, I'm not interested in playing Ashiok. I don't think Ashiok really does too much. I, I've played Ashiok against Scapeshift probably four or five times. I've cast an Ashiok against Scapeshift, and I've lost every single one of those games. Hey, Lou. Ferrigno getting that gifted sub. That gets us to 20 there. But anyway, that's Soul Tie Value. Uh, if you're watching this later on YouTube, don't forget to hit that like and subscribe buttons over there.
for this sweet deck. Um, let me know in the comments if you think I should play this tomorrow for the Mythic Championship Qualifier. Definitely think about it. Definitely considering it here. Um, but there we go. Uh, that's it for Soul Value. Thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you for the next video.